Carmen, you're right. Investigators say those two intruders were trying to break in through a back window, thinking no one was home, but there was. The man who lives here at this home on Pinrod heard glass shattering. I went to see what the noise was all about. It was two robbers breaking in through a back window. One uh, burglar uh, partially inside of his house. He went, retrieved his weapon and fired off a couple of shots hitting the individual coming through his window. Police say it was a 17 year old boy who the man shot and killed. The other robber got away. I heard they've been breaking in all these houses and they've been doing a little dirt in these abandoned houses, but it's, it's bad. But homeowners are ready and they're fighting back. In just over two weeks, there's been five home invasions where the homeowners shot the robbers, three of them fatally. Police say this is a strong message to criminals. Beware, nowadays it's the homeowner who's armed and dangerous. They need to arm themselves, and whoever go in your house, they get what they get. He got what he now take a look back here live on scene. Uh, this happened at 1230, but you see the scene is still very active. Detectives still here. The inv investigators have been going in and out of the house and also the coroner's office just showed up. I am told by detectives that that second intruder is still on the loose. We're live this evening from Detroit's West Side. I'm Chauncey Glover, Local Fool. I killed a guy. I killed the two guys who robbed me and I, and I killed one of them. 85 year old Don Lutz confronted two intruders who broke into his home early this morning. Tonight, one of them is dead. Police believe Lutz may have been targeted since they've been to his house before for similar incidents. Lutz lives alone in the small Lawrence County borough of Elport, and he keeps his gun under his pillow. Glenn Stevens picks up the story from there. Lutz says it was around 1.30 a.m. when he heard someone breaking into his front door, so he grabbed his gun and confronted the two intruders. Uh, I heard them break it, breaking in, and, and I went out. It was, it was in all in the dark, and then they, they jumped me, and we both went on the floor. During the scuffle, Lutz said he managed to fire a shot. And one guy rolled over dead, and, and uh, the other guy, uh, uh, he jumped up, and he ran out the front door. Police were still searching for the second suspect, who may or may not have been wounded. The other one, maybe the bullet hit him, too. I don't know. I hope so. Lutz is a Korean War veteran and a former champion weightlifter and thinks he came out the winner. I'm a little sore from, uh, from uh, scuffling with them, you know, them two guys. Lutz believes that God was on his side and he wasn't afraid when he confronted the suspects. I've never been afraid in my life. Uh, uh, God has always been with me and, and uh, I'm a hard believer of God and Jesus Christ. The incident is still under investigation, but authorities say it appears the shooting was justified. With more local news, I'm Glenn C. We have more breaking news. Authorities say a person is in critical condition after an intruder shooting early this morning in Frederick County, Virginia. Deputies say around 4 o'clock this morning, a person made threats towards the residents of a home on the 700 block of Kleins Mill Road in Middletown. Deputies say the residents called police, wanting the individual removed. When deputies arrived, that person ran around the home and entered through a rear door. When he did, the homeowner shot the intruder twice. That person was taken to Winchester Medical Center with gunshot wounds. This incident is still under investigation and no charges have been filed. Monday, February 26, there was an altercation between uh, two neighbors that lived below me. And uh, one of them had a knife and was stabbing the other. Uh, I poked my head out, saw blood everywhere in the hall. Uh, I ran in and uh, grabbed my AR-15, grabbed that over the handgun. It, main reason was the intimidation factor. Our, our, our main goal is public safety. We don't ever want to have to take a life. And uh, I definitely think the, <coughs> excuse me, intimidation factor of that AR-15 made him think twice. And in fact, he finally did drop the knife then. So it was a good day all in all that no one, no one was, uh, no one was fatally wounded. So good day all in all. The victim who was stabbed, he was out of surgery. He did have an artery that was severed, so the blood was squirting everywhere. I did get a tourniquet on him right away, though. Um, but uh, yeah, he's home. They thanked me. Everything's all good. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'd do it again if I had to. Do it the same exact way. Mm -hmm. Only other thing else I'd want to say is uh, the AR-15 has such a bad name now in, in our country's eyes. And uh, it, there's really nothing dangerous about that firearm at all, as long as you know how to use it and uh, everyone needs to train responsibly and uh, I think every law-abiding American should own an AR-15. 
Rodriguez was just booked in Wagner County Jail. Now, I talked to neighbors and they told me that they've been seeing more break ins than usual in that area. Deputies say three teens broke into this home. My neighbor said that they heard, uh, heard the, uh, the shots. The homeowner's son heard, grabbed his gun, and killed them all. You no, know, it surprised me. It could have been my house, too. Like I said, uh, you know, I'm just. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I'm still kind of shocked at this. Jacob Cavazos lives nearby. I built this house uh, 12 years ago, and I always leave my, my truck open everything. You know, nobody has uh, any problems at all. That is until recently. It kind of happened everything at once. Cavazos says in the last few weeks, there's been a spike in break-ins. They have break-ins, you know, in the garages and stuff. The latest deadly incident is a lot to take in. And, uh, you know, they... they they were aggressive, I'm sure, and, and they, 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 met, they met aggression. The teens were ages 17 to 18. Two died in the home. The third tried to run, but died from his injuries in the driveway. A fourth suspect, Elizabeth Marie Rodriguez, was also arrested and charged with three counts of felony murder. Deputies say she was the getaway driver. Sources say the 21-year-old is a mother of three. We asked Deputy Nick Mahoney if the crew could be connected to any other burglaries. We don't know if they're connected to any other burglaries in the area. Cavasso says he hopes this incident deters any other thieves from messing with his neighborhood. You know, most of my neighbors have, have uh, protection, you know. Yeah. In the hospital, shot in the face because a man says he caught him trying to break into his SUV. And that robbery victim of that vehicle, probably not the only victim. Yeah, more people woke up to find uh, their cars broken into this morning. Um, we're talking about Ridgemont neighborhood and far southwest Houston. Eyewitness News reporter Courtney Fisher spoke with some of the victims today. And she joins us now. Courtney? Natasha, you know, the more we walk down this street, the more stories we heard and the more examples of those break ins we saw. Take a look at this truck. It's been the same thing up and down the street. Usually one of the front windows punched out and then those thieves go to work and police believe it's the same group of them that hit each one of these cars or trucks. One after another, people in the Ridgemont subdivision woke up to this. Car windows shattered, their stuff everywhere. I came outside to go to work, you know, and this is what I saw. Winston says nothing was stolen from his SUV, but it's still going to cost him. Somebody was having fun with other people's property. Down the street, we were there when Nicole discovered her damage. I'll take my driver's license, my credit cards, everything else. Luckily, the thieves missed her purple gun and iPad, but they took her wallet. We found her license and social security card tossed in the street, cash gone. But I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Her boyfriend, Silverado, was also hit. A mess of papers left behind on the front seat. This ain't the first time they ain't came through here. <sighs> At least five cars and trucks were ransacked. The overnight crime spree ended on Ridge Rod Lane. Around 3.30 a.m., the man living here says his dog started barking. He went outside to check it out, and police say three people were breaking into his Tahoe. The homeowner shot one of them in the face. Two others ran off. This has been going on for a while. People living here say the neighborhood board recently did away with private security. Since then, car break-ins have been a problem. Hopefully this is something that is going to bring attention to and to let them know, you know, uh, we got to stop something. We got to do something. Police are looking for the two suspects who got away. As for the one caught, he's in the hospital. His mother tells ABC 13 he's just 19 years old. That's sad because at 19 I wasn't doing that. And when I talked to that teenager's mother, she said that he did go through surgery and that he is doing OK. We also know that she is busy at the hospital talking to investigators. For now, reporting live in Southwest Houston, Courtney Fisher, 13 Eyewitness News. Courtney, we know that these three teens are suspected in the involvement of those robberies in that area, but there are so many of these throughout the, throughout the county. Uh, cars being robbed and broken into all the time. Do police believe that they're part of a wider uh, uh, robbery spree? 
You know, Art, they couldn't say. And in fact, when we came out here this morning, they only thought they had hit up two, maybe three cars. It wasn't until just a few hours ago when we walked up and down the street and saw how many trucks like this were hit that they had wow. any idea this spanned to probably about a dozen vehicles. So we actually had to call them. Other homeowners called them as well, and they just got back out here. So no doubt that investigation is mm. just getting started. So disturbing to hear. Thank you, Courtney, for that report. Highland Valley area where a family is shaken up after a suspect forces his way into their home. At midday today at the top of the hour, NBC7's Liberty Zabala told you all about the father who was forced to shoot in order to protect his family. Now, Liberty, you're back to tell us what you're learning now about that suspect. Yeah, Marianne, this suspect messed with the wrong family this morning, and I spoke with the homeowner. He was visibly spooked by all of this, but he had to take matters into his own hands this morning, and in his hands was a loaded rifle. Deputies say that the father told this suspect he was not allowed to come in. Still, they say this 28-year-old suspect broke the door and entered. Then deputies say the father fired at the suspect multiple times, hitting the suspect in the upper body. Now deputies say the suspect locked himself then in their master bedroom until they arrived. Deputies say this suspect also had a prior misdemeanor warrant for his arrest already. And they also say he was under the influence of a stimulant. And that suspect was booked into jail for a number of charges, including vandalism, as well as burglary, <laughs> and for being Whoa. under the influence. For now, live in Valley, Highland Valley, Liberty Zavala, NBC7. Teen accused of trying to break into a neighbor's house is greeted by a homeowner with a gun. Police say that homeowner shot the teen several times. Good evening, I'm Dominique Soxa. I'm Bill Baiesa, thank you for joining us. Another neighbor witnessed the whole thing, actually calling to alert the homeowner that he was about to become a victim. Local 2's Philip Mena spoke with that witness and joins us live now with this story. Philip? Police say that that blue house on the corner there was the target. Neighbors say the man suspected of breaking into that home lives right across the street. Neighbor, you know yeah, I've been here for 25 years. I never seen st something stupid like that until yesterday. Moses Sosa says he was sitting outside his home in Rosenberg late Sunday night when he saw one of his neighbors, Alex Orona, trying to break into his friend's home across the street. Moses says he immediately called his friend who wasn't home at the time. And he goes, all right, Moses. I put my shoes on and let me load up my gun. Neighbors say 19-year-old Alex Orona recently moved in right across the street from the home police say he was trying to burglarize. So apparently he's not familiar with the neighborhood and who's home and who's, who has a weapon. Police say the homeowner showed up to find Arona pointing his pistol. And we just, uh, he pointed the gun at my, my homeboy, right? And when he was coming up to my homeboy, he tried to pull the trigger, the gun jammed. As miraculous as that was, Moses says he couldn't believe what he saw next. That's when my homeboy Ruben shot him about six or seven times. All I saw is the light, the bullets of the gun, and I saw the little light pop, pop, pop. Police say Arona was rushed to a nearby hospital with several gunshot wounds. A homeowner needs to protect themselves as they see fit, and I would have done the same thing. And police say that suspect never even made it inside the home. He was released from the hospital today before being taken to jail. Reporting live in Rosenberg, Philip Mena, KPRC Local 2. Now, police say the homeowner is not going to face any charges here. Alex Arona, meanwhile, has been charged with aggravated robbery, attempted burglary of a habitation, and unlawful possession of a firearm. Developing tonight, an elderly man turning the tables on a teenager who broke into his home while running from police. And that's when the homeowner pulled the trigger. And tonight we're learning more about the young suspect and who he was and when that trouble began. Local 10 News reporter Janine Samuel joining us live down from Miami with all the breaking details. Janine. And Calvin, I want to show you this man's house is now no longer a crime scene. And we're learning, as for the suspects, that this was a family affair. It was the youngest suspect who ended up getting shot. Flanked by cops, this 16-year-old alleged car thief, Alexander Sanchez, is led to an ambulance with his pants around his ankles. That's because cops say the elderly homeowner he confronted defended himself and shot Sanchez in the buttocks. It all started Friday morning. Police say Sanchez, his dad Vladimir, and another guy steal a car in Hialeah. But when they're pulled over in Miami, they run. It's around 29th and Flagler, they had closed it off with SWAT teams. 
A school is on lockdown, neighbors on edge. They were actually uh, asking residents that live in this block to go back inside their houses. We immediately uh, set up a perimeter. And police would soon get two of them in custody. But Sanchez, we're told, squeezes himself into a side door of this house near Northwest 28th Avenue and 3rd Street, hides in the basement, and confronts the 82-year-old man inside, who pulls out a handgun and shoots him. That homeowner was forced to fire because he was confronted by an intruder inside his home. We are told that Sanchez tried to make a run for it again, but police quickly caught up with him. We're also being told by police that it was his mother's car that he stole and that there were a bunch of drugs found inside. So Sanchez, his dad and that other man are now facing a slew of charges. As for this 82 year old man, we are told he is relieved the whole thing is over tonight. We're in Miami. I'm Janine Stanwood, Local 10 News. More about a shooting early this morning in Northwest Miami Dade that sent one man straight to the hospital. Police say that man was trying to break into a home and the homeowner had a gun. That suspect is in critical condition and neighbors say there have been other attempted break ins at that house. Local 10's Derek Shore is live with more. Derek. And in fact, neighbors in this area say there have been a rash of burglaries in this neighborhood over the past several months. In most of the cases, they've been able to scare away the would-be intruder or homeowners were not at home at the time of those burglaries. But in this case, the homeowner would actually open fire on a suspect here at this home on Northwest 2nd Avenue. Neighbors saying it was bound to happen. Protecting your loved ones, your family, and your home, there's always justification in that. And it seems that is what happened this morning as a homeowner took aim at a would-be intruder. It was definitely one shot. It might have been two, but yeah, it woke me up. It happened just after 5 this morning. Investigators say that 22-year-old suspect was trying to break into the home on Northwest 2nd Avenue near 143rd Street. The homeowner, who was inside with his wife and two small children, grabbed his gun and fired at the man before he got inside. The suspect was rushed to a hospital and is in critical condition. His car, found in the driveway, was towed away from the scene. The family's attorney saying they are shaken up but uninjured, and he's confident police will find the shooter justified. You do not have to wait until they are struck or until they are attacked, especially in their own, own home and especially when you've got a house full of children. And it seems this neighborhood has been terrorized in recent months with similar incidents. I've had on two different occasions people basically uh, try to force their way into my home. They covered her with a blanket, made her get on the floor while they ransacked the house. Robin Wright, a few doors down, says her stepmother was held by home invaders overnight this summer. They've been in this neighborhood, my parents, for almost 30 years, and the neighborhood wasn't like this, and so the rash of break-ins is very unfortunate. And a number of neighbors say they have installed security systems over the past few months, including at this house, but that did not seem to deter this suspect. That 22-year-old is in the hospital listed in critical condition. His name has not been released, but police will be looking to see if he ha perhaps has any other connections to other crimes in this area. We're live in Northwest Miami Day, Derek Shore, Local 10 News. All right. Very quiet. I, I don't even see many cars when I'm out walking my dogs in the evening. Sometimes not a single one. Donnie Eames has lived here for 46 years and doesn't think twice about her safety. But Monday night, law enforcement surrounded her neighbor's home to investigate a possible break in. A neighbor Eames says she knows very well. He's very, very kind. He's helped me a number of times do different things. He's always willing to do anything I ask him to do. He's a super neighbor. New Hanover County deputies received a call around 930 where a resident along Mohawk Trail said he shot an intruder. You know, an event like this that occurs right down the street, it just sparks some curiosity. The owner of the house, Andrew Thompson, told law enforcement he heard the door of his home being kicked in. A man entered and he fired his gun. Deputies say 35 year old Daniel Hauser later died from that shooting and that Thompson and Hauser knew each other, creating more questions now than answers. What I'm waiting on now from a news standpoint is whether or not factually it was a breaking and entering or if there was some kind of motive behind the breaking and entering or if it was just random. As for Eames, she wants to know more as well, but will be more aware of her surroundings in the meantime. You know, I, I need to do something but I don't know what yet. <laughs> In Wilmington, Kendra Douglas, Spectrum News.
Police say a homeowner shot and killed a burglar this morning at a South Louisville home. WDRB's Josh Breslow breaks down what happened and what's next for the person who pulled the trigger. Josh? LNPD is still trying to piece all of this together, but at this point, officers say this appears to be a case of self-defense. I've been here 23 years and we've never had anything like this before. Flashing police lights and crime scene tape were not what Tom Vessels imagined he'd see outside of his home on Manslick Road. Even more troubling, Vessels says, was the house they were centered on just across the street from his. Real nice people, yeah, and uh, they've never you know, caused anybody any trouble. According to LMPD, officers were called to the home near Iroquois Park around 4 o'clock Thursday morning for a report of a shooting. Uh, when officers arrived, uh, they found the body of a white male deceased outside the home. The man killed, police say, was in the process of breaking into the home when the homeowner shot him. LMPD calls it a case of apparent self-defense, saying it appears the homeowner shot the intruder to protect family members inside. Does everything in this case sound legal? Yes, it does. Practicing law for nearly 30 years, criminal defense attorney Bill Butler tells me if LMPD's investigation finds the person was trying to break in, it's unlikely the homeowner will be charged. The person has to be attempting entry or has to have made entry into the home. If they're just standing on the lawn and they're thinking about uh, breaking in, then the homeowner has no right whatsoever to shoot them. It appears to be a similar situation for the woman who police say pulled a gun from her purse Tuesday night in downtown Louisville and shot and injured a man. Officers say the man, who appeared to have a weapon, tried to rob the woman as she got into her car. If LMPD's investigation finds that's just how it played out, Butler says that shooting would also likely be justified. Louisville police continue to investigate both of those incidents. Live in downtown Louisville, Josh Breslow, WDRB News. Thank you, Josh. Good evening. Gunning for trouble. A break in turns deadly when a homeowner defends himself from two men breaking into his home. It happened around 1130 last night near 98th and Sage. Police say the man who lives there fired his handgun when he saw them in a room of his home armed with weapons. When police arrived, the suspect who had bullets headed his direction from the homeowner was dead in the yard. The other intruder got away. Leroy Molina, who lives right across the street, tells us his neighbor is a nice man and he defends his actions. To me, they deserved it. They shouldn't be breaking in in the first place. But I feel sorry for, uh, for uh, the owners. The homeowner has not been charged with any crime, but tonight there is an ongoing investigation. Two men are behind the newsroom and more details on this story. Matt. Well, this house that was targeted, you could clearly see where the door was kicked in. And when we went knocking this morning, we were told there'd be no comment. New Haven detectives canvassed this Fairhaven neighborhood after a homeowner allegedly shot a man whom he says was trying to break into his house. If you're not even a guest to be in the house, you're not even supposed to be at my house, then call the cops. Police were called, but not before the gunfire. Officers responded to 199 Pine Street just after 3.30 this morning. It's here where they found 26-year-old Jorge Ortiz, who had been shot. According to police, the homeowner said he had heard banging at his front door and told investigators he shot Ortiz after Ortiz allegedly kicked in the front door and entered the house. You don't know what this person going to do when they come into your house? They're coming with an intention to take something. Ortiz was taken to Yale New Haven Hospital with a non-life-threatening gunshot wound. The homeowner was interviewed by police and has not been charged. Connecticut is a version of the Castle Doctrine, which probably 40 or 45 states in the United States have. Uh, it's a common law doctrine that says people can defend their homes against intruders. Professor William Dunlap is with Quinnipiac University's School of Law. I don't know the facts of this case at all, so this is just a general reference to Connecticut law. But Connecticut does have a typical self-defense law that allows people to use force to protect person or premises or property. And while police investigate, Neighbors are trying to calm their nerves. I'm scared to lock the doors and keep everything closed. And the investigation is ongoing. We're live with the Mobile Newsroom. Matt McFarland, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. All right, Kirsten, thanks. And we're following some breaking news, as we mentioned. Some news out of North Tulsa County. It's a shooting 
And deputies tell us someone was trying to break into a home up there, perhaps. Jitzel Puente is on the scene for us to tell us what she knows. Jitzel? Scott, Lisa, within the last 30 minutes, we learned from deputies that the suspect is 33 years old and he remains in the hospital in serious condition. They will not release his identity until he is booked into the Tulsa County Jail. Now, I want to show you the house where this happened here, right here behind me. This is on North 131st Street. Deputies say that the homeowner woke up to the man trying to break inside his home while his two children and his wife were sleeping inside. But before that uh, intruder made it inside, he shot shot him at least twice. Now, when Collinsville police and deputies got here to the scene, they found the suspect about 300 yards from the home and he was rushed to the hospital in serious condition. They did find several weapons that they believe belong to the suspect. Now, that family is okay this morning. Uh, they tell us that those two, uh, their two Two children are with their grandparents right now while they continue to investigate. They also tell us that the suspect might live in this area nearby, but it doesn't look like he knows the homeowner and that family. We're going to send it back to you in the studio. A far southwest side mother fends off an armed intruder by shooting him several times. This incident happened just after noon today in the 3200 block of Banta Road. RTV6's Jack Reinhardt joins us live from IMPD Southwest District, where detectives are trying to determine exactly what happened. Jack? Well, as you said, Erica, Metro Police are still trying to put together the circumstances attendant to this shooting. But we did learn just minutes ago that the victim and the suspect did not know each other. The suspect police say went in through a rear window, but he left the residence feet first on a hospital gurney in serious but stable condition with multiple gunshot wounds. I think he definitely picked the wrong house. The suspect had ample warning. Just above the door of the residence in the 3200 block of West Banner Road hangs a sign that reads, We don't call 911. According to relatives of the homeowner, the suspect approached the rear of the residence and none too quietly. He broke in through the baby's window uh -huh. okay and when he was coming out the door my sister was coming out her bedroom door and he sh he aimed and shot at her first and then she shot him the young mother escaped injury family members say it was the second time in one month that someone perhaps the same suspect tried breaking into the residence neighbors say the woman and her family will protect what's theirs she's not afraid to mix it up then oh no she's not afraid to mix it up or not you know she's she's you know pretty straightforward person you know she's old school you know you she's there to protect her and her family and that's what she done the neighborhood is a mix of rural and residential southwest district police say home break-ins like today's are extremely rare this shooting is very unusual in this area of our district this is a, a largely uh, residential suburban area and we don't have this kind of crime so obviously when we have an incident like this as we do throughout the city involving uh, the use of a firearm it uh, is something we take very personally and we want to get in front of and investigate uh, aggressively and find the person responsible. Edsel Ballard says all of his children were taught to defend themselves when put in life-threatening situations. Brother Eddie calls his sister a good shot. He shot at her twice and then missed and she returned fire. Yeah, she's a better shot than that. Huh? Right. And that's a damn good thing. Now the suspect remains in serious but stable condition at the hospital. Police have identified him, but they have yet to release his name. Reporting live on the West Side, Jack Reinhardt, RTV6. You have some new information about how many rounds were fired, is that right? 40 rounds, Anusha and Sophia. That's what police are telling us. More than 40 rounds were fired, and not one of them hit that homeowner. He was standing in a yard just behind me over my left shoulder at this house. Three suspects came by, police say, and they started opening fire at him, and he returned fire. And if you can uh, pan over here to the left, you can see the suspect's vehicle down the street on Glen Burnie. It sort of crashed there on the left. It's a Nissan. Altima. Let's show you some of the video. This happened early this morning. It's remarkable this homeowner wasn't hit because there was a, an excess of 40 rounds fired and the homeowner actually was able to hit all three suspects in a moving vehicle, which is quite remarkable when you consider all of these facts. 
Two of those suspects are dead, police tell us. One died at the scene. The other died at the hospital. The third suspect is at Bentop. He is in surgery. We don't know his condition just yet. The homeowner who's been answering questions all morning is still with police and has gone downtown to answer more questions. Detectives telling us that this is most likely going to be a self-defense case and the homeowner will likely not be charged. His brother tells us, family members tell us that the brother uh, goes to the shooting range often and has an AR-15, and that is what they tell us is the weapon he used in this shooting. Reporting live, I'm Jake Reiner, KPRC Channel 2 News. Wow, Jake, a close call for that homeowner. Thank you so much for that.